coming to our weekly coming up. As you know, we do this uh, every week. A uh, few are friends, our good friends here. Oh, wait. The technology these guys. Got me we have some people on the webinar. So welcome even the people on the webinar. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we do weekly technology deep dives with one of our customers here at GTC. My name is Keith. Uh, welcome to the people in the office over here and and uh, online. We have one of our good partners, Absence, and we have Ryan Waters. And usually we do those twelve to one. Next week we have Exagrid. Data dedupe with uh, backup. Sorry, backup to disk with data dedupe. So uh, they will be here next week uh, for next week's weekly seminar. And now I give you Brian Waters with Absence. Great. Thank you, Keith. There you go. And then back over. Well, thanks, everyone, for taking time to drive out and attend this lunch. Um, I'm Brian Waters. I'm the partner manager for Absence. I've been with the company for almost three years. So I live in the Bay Area, but I travel around the western half of the US, Canada. And actually, we just stood up uh, our business in Brazil and Mexico because we're finding that we're not the only country with issues with profile management, accessing applications, using your devices with a consistent user experience. So just kind of start right off on that term. How many are familiar with user virtualization, term-wise? One, okay, John. John will probably raise his hand a lot through my question because John actually uses Absence. And John's with Cubic Corporation, and thanks for being here, John. He's going to share later on in the presentation his use and the value that the organization is realizing from our company. Thanks, John. Uh, how about a couple other terms? User-centric computing. Does that mean anything to anybody? No. Okay. That's what I thought. Those on the webinar, you know, if you do, you know, click the chat window, uh, let us know, and you know, we'll absolutely start and give you time to talk about that. My point I want to make about that is how many of you... I've heard the term cloud virtualization. Okay, everybody nods their head. Yes. All right. That is one of our challenges as a company trying to communicate to the market what is absence? What is user virtualization? Well, before I go exact to that scientific definition of user virtualization, let me go th through a vision, you know, and what our company started off to solve around profiles, profile management. Very simple. And what is a profile? Hey, John, what's a profile to you? Sorry, we have John repeat that for Mike. Right. Yeah, perfect. So it's common, common five things. You know, if I had to put it in um, sales terms, because a lot of time my job is going out and training sales folks and engineers, ultimately, profile is your DNA. Your and what we look forward to as an absence user, as John has experienced, it downstreaming that personalization, that profile, to any one device you might be using. And for those on the phone, I'm pointing at an iPad and an iPhone and XP. So for our technology, it really doesn't matter. Excuse me while I keep up with the slides here. And hey, could you advance that? Because that's not, that's not advancing. Okay, so when we go through the what if scenario, you know, what if you were to come in one day to work and you're shown with a new HP laptop, Windows 7, and you're virtualized in a Citrix environment? Some of the things that might happen are your personalization has changed. Your icons are not there. The way you access applications is much, much different. And in fact, you're finding yourself calling the help desk a lot, lot more. And that's because without absence, without user virtualization, a technology that really doesn't care about the hardware, the OS, and I have in the terms uh, on the back whiteboard for those on the phone, XP to Windows 7, virtual desktops, and physical. Because for absence, we really don't care what way you're getting the information to your users. What we care about is that it's managed in such a way that I can get on to any one device in less than 30 seconds, I have the same experience of the applications. My Outlook sensor is following me from all of my devices. So that's user virtualization. And that's a lot of words to explain it because our, our solution does a whole lot. In the core set of products, what is addressing, excuse me, keep up with these two. There we go. So just to share some numbers with you to set the stage of how this got to be such a problem. So 
this is a 2012, 2013 number. You can look to be about two billion devices. You know, we can thank Surface for doing that. We don't need to take thank BlackBerry for doing that because BlackBerry so there's a little shift, but between the market leaders and devices between Samsung and iOS, we add in more complexity. We've got more applications, personal, business, and we want them all now. We've got one, over one million unique configurations that could be in a large organization, let's say over 5,000 users. Um, I recall a conversation with Canadian Air Traffic Control. They have 8,000 applications, and they have to go through an assessment on you know what, we should be using about 3,000. When they look at the cost that they're paying on renewals on all of those applications, you know, we'll talk about application manager and how we save costs on managing those applications. The mobile workforce, 67%, I think it's more like 80%. Why? Because more people are accessing their applications, information from these devices versus a physical laptop or a desktop. So would you agree? I'll shake our heads. We agree on the problems out there. We're experiencing them. That's why we're here why John's using our product. So what if we could take you know, that user and start managing separately? That might sound complicated, because if I'm thinking about manage, excuse me, <laughs> these aren't keeping up. We'll do that next time. Um, what if I could take that user and manage them separately? But what if I have a group, a group of guys that are engineers, and they're using CAD applications, and I want to make sure that they have the ability to get to those applications and not really actually push out a bunch of Microsoft applications just because I have 1,000 people in the environment. This is where we begin to save costs. Now I can provide you a solution by using Application Manager in Absence. And by the way, I'm going to pass out a little survey here to keep us all paying attention. There's a lot of prizes I have both from Amazon, and for those on the phone, I have something separate for you, from you that you can plug in your answers on. Uh, okay, you can, you can share, Daniel, you can share. Thanks. You can keep up, yeah. So a little quiz is being handed out here. John, I think you guys already know what's going on. So I've got, I want you to take a minute, look down the six questions, and then I want you to turn it over, okay? So it's on the blank side. At the end, I'm gonna ask all these questions. There's a big prize for the guy that gets the most answers correct. So basically you're actually asking people to actually listen to you? Yes, I am. <laughs> um, I'm handing out all the answers that are on this USB, but you're not allowed to plug it in. It's actually, if anything, I'm saving you uh, carrying around 50 pages of an ROI study that I have on this from Forrest or about our product where you know, one broad bullet on this, in the Windows XP to Windows 7 scenarios of people getting there, which by the way, in April 2014 is the hardline cutoff from Microsoft. They're not gonna support it. There are vehicles to pay Microsoft a lot of money to support it. Come on in. We've got a spot over here. Okay, so you guys can go ahead and turn those quizzes over. You can have a minute to look at that and then turn that over. So just to get that bullet out of the way, it's about $1,900 that we save per user of migrating someone to XP to Windows 7. In terms of time, in a 500 user company scenario, roughly about five months of project time down to a couple weeks. All right, we can get into those dynamics. And there's a lot of different dynamics on the user, what they're gonna need as they go over to seven. And then if they're virtualized, even more time on the project. So ultimately, absence, you know, here's the value of this whole, you know, I've got 50 slides I'm gonna show you, you know, through this presentation the next hour. Actually, it's nine. But this is the most important one. We decouple the user from the hardware, the OS, the applications. We then build out a SQL server with absence. And then the next time your user is going to log in, we have an agent on the endpoint. And then the personalization is then downstream to that device. So any questions on that so far? Okay, great. John, when you finish your bite there, I'd love to know, you know, as an example, before you're using Absence, you know, specifically 
John's using Environment Manager and Application Manager. Environment Manager is responsible for managing profile settings, okay? So down to what John described earlier about that DNA. And then Application Manager then manages what should I be using, what should I not be using so far as applications? Should I be able to use everything that my company's procured and purchased? That's a big waste of money. No. John's going to expand on that. Fantastic. So, John, talk to me about your top help discards. For us, in our market study, we find it's about my profile went corrupt. I need access to this application. Or, you know, just some, something of my user experience when I went to VDI is not working anymore. Those are the top three that we see. What do you see, John? Fantastic. And there's, so there is a learning curve to it. You know, this isn't just magic fairy dust, set it and forget it. It's a technology where if you want to be successful, you know, you have to have some services involved with this. But the good news is it's the migrate one time. So once you've migrated to Absence, when Windows 9, 10, 12 comes along, a different version, and there'll be different versions of Citrix, Vue, and so on, it's one time. Would you agree, John? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, excuse me. So far as this kind of circle of life, the donut, and I have, you know, it used to be me when my hair was shorter. Um, this is a real depiction of a follow-on technology. Because while we care about the personalization and the devices, it, it's a whole life cycle. In the, in the case of my iPhone, I, I have to, I, this is terrible, but this thing is under my pillow at night for just about everything. If this goes away, the best analogy of absence, if this is stolen or I lose it or it cracks, it's gone, I can restore this and be up and running. There are parts of iCloud that we can restore that, but so far as being managed from a mobility space, whether I'm Android or iOS, we can now jump from what absence is doing here, we're not stopping there, we're continuing the flow of the technology to the devices. So that means that I've got so a solution such as mobile device management, mobile application management as well. So why we care and we do a great job, we have over 4,000 customers, um, let me jump ahead, excuse me, 4,000 customers just let alone when we got our start 14 years ago solving issues on squeezing more users on Citrix services and servers of which that's performance manager. So I, on the, excuse me, right board, it's very hard to see over there. But we have three products that make up the suite, Application Manager, Performance Manager, Environment Manager. Once again, as a reminder, John's using Environment Manager and Application Manager. Performance Manager is the scenario when you get into, I've got in a very intensive application that's utilizing a lot of CPU on my endpoint. How can I load balance that? What should I allocate to that? So that user's experience is better. It's faster log on, going from three minutes down to 30 seconds in most average use cases. And um, to the use case scenario, I mean, as you can see, we are pretty much cross-vertical. You know, in large accounts such as Kaiser Permanente, they're rolling our solution up to 30,000 users. You know, and we, we had to work very hard for that. And Kaiser is very conservative on the type of technology that they deploy and roll out. So as they're rolling out the Citrix, in one way, they should actually be rolling out us first because the profiles and everything will be captured and presented out so there's no disruption to the users and to the nurse, nurses' carts where they're rolling around. They're very used to looking at the three applications that they go into. So any questions on that so far on the technology? On the, on the webinar, are we okay? Is there? Okay. Very good. Okay. So... Some people will ask me, hey, Brian, when it comes to profile management, doesn't Citrix have something like UPM? Doesn't Microsoft have something? Doesn't VMware, Mac, they do. 
they all have something. The good news from, and you know, I have a larger list if I could fit on the screen, Cisco, HP, Dell also. The good news is from an absence perspective, much like we're agnostic on the hardware, the OS that you're using, the exception of a Unix environment, so just back to the technology, it's about SQL for us, it's a Windows world for the user for the most part. So we have to have that bolted on. But so far as what Citrix says, you know, we, we cohabitate very, very powerful in the environment, very much a common customer. I think, John, you know, in your use case, it's specific to ZApp, correct? Or are you also rolled out to physical desktops without? Uh, yeah, okay. Right. Oh, for the mic. Yeah. That's okay. So again, while we're coined, and if you did some Google searching after this meeting or to learn more about absence, you might find a lot of us in the stack of the virtualized desktop environment. But in fact, it doesn't matter if this were a Dell machine or HP. It really doesn't matter. It really matters about the personalization coming down to the end user. So getting back to cost savings, so that was the theme of this. Now, while I didn't print out or kill a bunch of trees printing out the 25, 50 page study on, the, uh, on your USB sticks on the ROI and how you know, this can align to your IT and your business initiatives within the company, some of the questions to look around are, what am I spending on help desk calls? You know, if you took just a snapshot on a week, I mean, John and I just discussed his three top calls, his three top help desk calls were around BDI, user settings, and profile corruption, right? So with that, those, are, those sometimes, depending on the organization, can be $1, $2 problems. Organizations, we find over 200 users, it seems to be a $25 to $35 problem. So looking across, you know, I'm sorry if you can't see that all the way over there. We can follow up with everyone. Correct, Keith, to send out the presentation Absolutely. as well. Okay. And, there. Uh, Perfect. So a lot of tactical items that start up here with log on times. You know, reducing those down to three minutes, from three minutes to 30 seconds. A profile corruption, 90%. Profile remediation. The list goes on. And in fact, in the paper, you know, we review different verticals, you know, oil and gas, manufacturing, healthcare, finance. And the, the common theme is, yes, they all could nod their head on this ROI study that's very factual to go, you know what, you have a lot of soft cost savings within your product, AppSense, but on the hardware side of things, now we can start extending out the life of the physical laptop. We can start put, squeezing more users on servers. So your server purchasing starts to slow down as well. But overall, op cost you know, your user experience, the success of these projects when you're rolling out BDI, when you're going XP to 7, you'll have a happier user, a shorter time frame to deployment, and, you know, as I had on the previous slide. Can I roll back to that slide, this? Okay. And it's a journey. Also, I mean, we have a lot of interesting marketing slides that talk about desktop, the user, and the journey. But I mean, like Kaiser, uh, JP Morgan Chase, they all started out with one little problem, profiles and having consistency. And then when they learned more about absence and wow, so you can, if I'm opening up an application, you can actually stop a URL that has an Im embedded virus that's gonna blow up on the users and spread across the organization. Yeah, we can stop that. Oh, and we can also reduce down the cost of Microsoft licensing, Adobe licensing, as John pointed out earlier, yes. And then we can you know, put more power behind your Citrix servers and squeezing more users on those servers. But the value doesn't stop there. Then when you extend out the technology to the mobile devices, then we can get in a conversation about helping you with managing files, unstructured data to your storage, and leverage also a solution called DataNow, as we've got about a two, about a third of the companies right now in beta testing and really and trying out our product data now. So if you're familiar with Dropbox, Box.net, you know, a lot of companies, or users rather, the way they can shortcut getting data from their machines, either they're using cloud or they're using this. And they're breaking HIPAA rules. They're breaking Sarbanes-Oxley. They're breaking a lot of foundational rules that are getting companies into trouble. So talk to your rep about data now and how we can help there. How's our time? Just do a quick time check. We're good. We have a lot okay. Of okay. Perfect. Okay, let me 
me go back one item. <laughs> no. So just to, you know, get some questions out on whether it's online, people can answer this. When you review some of the issues that you're having out of your top three organizations, and I'll start with Dave. So Dave, in your organization, out of the items we've talked about or projects, is there anything facing you today where, yeah, you know? Oh, yeah. I just so on the spot. Yeah. And they introduce yourself, company you work for, what you what you're doing. Sure. So when you look across, you know, some of the challenges of whether it's helped at, or it's something on the the network that's impacting users, you know, maybe it's not specific right away to user virtualization. On what the common denominator you see, help desk calls. Well, Microsoft oh. licensing is always an issue for us. Mm. Um, a complicated for business systems. So we're an acquired business. Right. So, um, that's something we need some help. So okay. Yeah, absolutely. So that brings our product application manager. So while when our companies start off learning how users are, you know, impacting Citrix servers. We started looking at that behavior going, okay, what applications are hogging up all of the resource? And then also, should the user be using that application? Should they even have access? Using an iTunes analogy, an iTunes store analogy, using application manager, we can now set up the user for success and IT as well and helped us to say, here's the application that's sitting right there. If you need it one day, you can double click it and it'll be provisioned to your device. But it's not like I need to do IT help desk call, nor contact procurement, it's right there and it can live in this ecosystem to say it's about the user, let's lessen the de help desk calls and also let's save money. Because then when we can run an audit with application manager and say to Microsoft or Adobe, here's how many people actually touch the golden image, here's how many people touch this application and then we could show an ROI on we don't need to review at a thousand, excuse me, renew at a thousand users for next year's you know, being supported on those applications. That makes sense to everyone? It's a long use case, but it's a savings around how, you know, you save money on applications and also the use. Anybody else? Leek? Leek? Yeah. Anything stand out to you here? <laughs> Microphone. <laughs> Get this down. And Lick, what, can you say your name, who you work for, and what your responsibility is? And so that was around user per server. User per server. Absolutely. So this is this is what our company was born for. I mean, this is what we started. Our very first product performance manager, and how the relationship with Citrix has been so tight over the years is just that as well. Being able to squeeze more users and getting down to CPU throttling, a load balancing effect for the end user. So why do I need to when I log on to my machine have you know every application is fire all at once? I mean, we had a bank that they seriously, they had an hour and a half log on until they can get it. And they would have people like call their admins, go log me on my machine, you know, let me know when I'm there. Meanwhile, that's lost productivity. That's lost user time, that's resource, and so on. So again, it, that's a hard number to quantify because who knows how long they're actually at that water cooler for losing time. So, okay, any other, anything else stand out? Okay, so we're gonna take a pause here and I'd like you to go ahead and do your quiz, except for the GTC employees. <laughs> uh, there is a top prize here, all right? So take your time, go through it, and do you, who, who needs a pen? Go. Oh, thank you. All right. And did everyone? Yeah. 
And so how, how it works is, and you know, go, we can make it an open dialogue also. So as you're looking at the questions, you know, if there's something that I didn't cover, I'll give, you know, I'll give one answer here. But we're going to ultimately look at who has the top answers. You get the big prize. So I have some second and third prizes also to go through. I think the most important question on the whole survey is, who is your, your, your GTC rep? You know? And as a follow-on item to, on the USB, you know, there are papers. Yeah. <laughs> Follow up with your GTC rep so that, you know, on your USBs, there are their ROI study metrics. There's information about our products. You know, we want to be able to come in and have a conversation around how can we help on your XBDA 7 efforts, your VDI projects and challenges maybe with users, or also your physical, thank you. physical or uh, hardware issues you might be having on getting your users to another platform, whether it be technology, whether it be acquisitions and migrations, which is a really big point. I think, Dave, you mentioned earlier your acquired company or, yeah, so we are, there's a lot of value there for us because if the organization is taking a look at, you know, we have this other business unit that we're bringing into the fold in IT. How can we be sure that we're going to do the same thing consistently here for saving them money on applications, their profiles, and really, ultimately, we don't want to break our financial rules, Sarbanes-Oxley or so on. And I do have some second, third, and since we're a small group, fourth, fifth prizes here. So, And online, actually. So the quiz questions are also coming across the webinar right now. So you're, you're all participants. You can feel free. You guys, yeah, you guys should do it. We got a prize for you guys. You got to fill it out. See how well. <clears throat> Let's see what you learned. Are you done? Yeah? Okay. Let me see, because we're going to go through this right now. Okay. Have all your pens. Thanks. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Do write your names on them. All right. You can't claim the winner. <laughs> and Matt. This is John. Okay. All right. Do you want John? <laughs> all right. We've got one more coming from like GTC guys. I'll do you separately, but do finish and put your name on them. Okay. Yeah, cool. All right, thanks, Luke. All right, let me know when they're turned in online, if they're doing them. And then if not, just, yeah. Okay, all right. So. Okay. So. You guys are, you guys are good. All right, I'm spending just a couple minutes reviewing the answers from the quiz here, and then we'll go through the prize and the correct answers. Hmm. 
Application. Okay, this is impressive. This is probably the best hit rate. And, and also, you know, as I go through this, I want you guys to be able to remember, well, what are we usually good at? For me, it's facts, numbers, figures, right? So you guys did very well across the board on that. Um, I think when I look at lit, so, well, I'll just tell you right up, Dave. I want to had, So you won. You got the most. Let me just read this off. So, nice job. So, yeah, Dave and Fisk Global. Uh, FIS. Thank you. Let's see from here. So, Dave, in the question of how many user, how how much are we saving per user? It's XP to Windows Seven migration, nineteen hundred dollars. Okay, it's a quantifiable. We had analysts do this, nineteen hundred dollars per user. So, nice job. Uh, which product solves profile corruption? Environment Manager EM. How many customers does Absence have? Four thousand, correct, and growing. What are the top three user help desk calls? Application is slow. Reset password. Need access. So, yeah. I think spot on with what we talked about. Or if you want to disagree because you didn't win. But no, no, just, uh, the name of your TTC account rep, Jay Irvine, I think it was here. And average logon time after implementing absence, 30, 30 seconds. Which, guys, that's actually an average that we're conservative, but we're in scenarios where we're like seven to 10 seconds. Okay, so Dave has first place, so you are you need to uh, write down your address. You get an iPod that I send you via Amazon, because it comes out of a expense budget. Um, Don was second place. So, Don, all right, Don, I, I hope you, you haven't got too many of these in your life. So, $20 to Starbucks, and that was Don. <laughs> and then, let's see, it was, Matt was, Third place, so he gets twenty dollars Starbucks, and you know you guys for let's see then, uh, John and excuse me, yeah I did this right, John and look you were the closest, and I have a special something for you and your participation. Thank you, but here's at least five dollars to Starbucks, and I got you, wait, did I get all of you guys? Yeah, you all won something, so five dollars. Lick, there you are, five dollars. Did you do a quiz, Jamie? I should have had you. Okay. So let's let's do a little last competition here. Let's put the pressure on the DTC guys. So guys, let's look. Did you complete your quizzes? <laughs> All right. So let's turn them in real quick. So guys, as we're closing up here, you know. Yeah, I invite you as the most important on the question uh, on the quiz was who, who's your rep? You know, there's a lot of stuff that our solution could do. Past profiles, past managing applications. It really is a journey. If I have another slide where you know Chase Manhattan actually they they told us this um, at our one of our sales conferences. Chase IT manager says we had problem with profiles, and then we found we had problems with how users were accessing this specific application and this geolocation and this time and so on and so on and so on. And the guys, and when, what was it, our VP of sales at the time, well, what else does AppSense do? And he says, everything. And that's sometimes the hard thing to communicate from a technology vendor because we do do so many things. But what is going to rise to the top, save the most money in this desktop management, your user savings? And it's a lot because now that we've got out to the market mobile now, data now, it brings in the conversation of, you know, the, it doesn't stop here on my laptop or my desktop to the devices and how we're accessing applications and not getting our companies in trouble by copying and pasting information from a corporate application into, let's say, a Twitter or a Facebook accidentally, something like that. That's where we're looking at the user and that DNA is we want to protect the corporate assets also from that. So a lot of places, please contact your GTC rep, and let's see who won. Let's see who, who really stayed on the list. So right away, Nick, Alec, and Gabriel got the first two answers right. Third, yes. 
fourth. Perfect. They didn't put the name of their account rep, at least Gabe didn't, so that's okay. And third six. So, yeah, like in that, I mean, yeah, it's pretty even. So I think, you know, all three of you guys are winners. Good job. So what I expect you to do is go sell lots of absence. What I expect your customers to do is take a meeting. Okay. <laughs> all right. There you go. And one for participation there. Yeah, for moral support. Okay. <laughs> yeah, getting the pens. Exactly. So guys, we're closing up. I think I'm keeping you nice and on time for ending, yeah, a little actually before one. Daniel, any words of, I mean, you've been kind of exposed to our solution to put you on the spot for a moment since you're here. Um, any uh, observations, words, you know, where you are as an organization with our solution and customers? Sure, uh, we're actually in the middle of the implementation right now for a customer who, just because of their environment, they're like, we've got that five to six minute log on because of the security requirements that they have. Um, so we're doing the, we did the POC of AppSense, and it brought that logon time down to less than 60 seconds. So 60 seconds still might seem long, but when it was uh, upwards over five minutes of logon time, getting it to 60 seconds was pretty good. So we're in the middle of that right now, and the customer is really happy with that. And also the ability to do red time, I don't want to get too technical, but able to insert registry keys, import and export registry keys when you actually launch the application instead of doing it in a script, in a profile script, is really a beneficial part of the product that we use a lot. Great. Great. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, you know, and just on that note in closing, you know, it, it is a journey, right? Anytime you're invoking a new technology on, technology on this, where is this going to have the most value? Where is it going to save across my organization all of this, you know, money that we invest into our company? This is a lot of money that's just flying out the door and it doesn't have to do that anymore. So please, uh, you know, contact your DTC rep if there's any continuing interest. I'm sure your DTC rep will do, be doing the same with you and about our solution. And thanks for coming today. Keith, any closing words while I get, a, get you uh, mid-bite there? Good? Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, on the phone as well. And have a good afternoon. Thanks, guys.